You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. It's a rainy and gray afternoon here in Philadelphia, as it was for our Maryland Terrapins. Uh, Terps go down in the national championship game 15-5 to to Notre Dame. And boy, was Notre Dame good. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason. This is Bruce Posner. Bruce, as always, you've seen a lot of these. Tell me what you thought of what you saw in that field today. Uh, we were dominated. It was, uh, you know, I'm too old to cry, so I'm not going to cry. But uh, this is such a great year just to get here. You know, like I said in the press conference, 75 other teams are not here. We were in the final game, and unfortunately, uh, midnight came early for Cinderella. We just could not get it done. But the one thing, you know, that I found gave a little hope was how we started, Wayne. You know, two zip, and you start thinking, you got the ball, maybe you go to three, and then I'm telling you from that point on, Notre Dame just took over, and they just found easy shots and I know Logan wound up with 10 saves had a great second half but like Tillman said the shots were coming at him like close and from every angle and it was just not much he could do but hats off to Notre Dame the Cavanaugh's were great and Liam Entman was just unbelievable I think he wound up with 17 saves but Luke Weirman and we said this 17 out of 24 faceoffs. there's no question about who the best face-off guy was, but hats off to Notre Dame on a great victory in two years in a row. Absolutely. They were spectacular. The goalie was fantastic. And here's our goalie. But I'm going to ask our goalie first about what happened with Maryland's offense that they just flatlined. Yeah, I mean, it was just um, the, the team that we saw earlier in the season. And look, it wasn't crisp enough. The passes were one ball outside. They were across the body they weren't exactly in the right place and then you get a guy like Liam Entman on a roll and he's just in your head constantly Notre Dame great game plan fantastic coaching overall I think you're seeing um, what now is a lacrosse dynasty but it's finally coming true for the Irish and what it just it just wasn't there today it was no, just that so much off Maryland's defense although the effort was there Notre Dame was sending people high through the slot, 12 yards out, and by the time they got from one hash mark to the other, if this was a football field, and whipped that shot, that ball was going in the goal. It was unexpected how fast, to me, Notre Dame was running back and forth, left to right across the field. A lot of the damage was done side to side, not north to south. I'll take it that you're going to tell me that's really hard to cover, especially when they're that fast. Well, when we get Tony in here, I think we can talk about it a little bit more. Is you know the space, the space in the in the alley early in Notre Dame's midfield, just getting out and running and, and avoiding the contact, avoiding the hits from the Terps' short stick defensive midfield, and then you need more than what we got today from our goalie. You just needed him to steal one. You needed something just to change it, and it, it just it wasn't there. Even when they got the quick outlets, they drop them, and then you you know five yards, and a guy's right on your back, and that's what Notre Dame does. That's and they played their game today. They did. All right. Joining us for right before we go to break, Tony Wheeler. Tony, you saw a lot of Maryland, especially Luke Weirman. You saw McDonald, uh, Alviti, break into the offensive zone. They looked like they were open, and all of a sudden, they're getting back-checked. How does that keep happening? What did Notre Dame do that was so good? They're just relentless. That's what they do, and they weren't even in a 10-man. You know, It wasn't like Notre Dame was causing these problems off of pressure rides. It's just guys not giving up, and that that is the the Kavanaugh's. For they've been doing that since they've been at Notre Dame, and they just couldn't, you know, always back checking, never giving up. And credit to Notre Dame for that. All right, I'm gonna have Mason's gonna take the next question here. Tony, I mean, what did you see from the Terps? Obviously, early they get to two, and then Entman just comes on. And did you see it kind of the way I did, where Maryland's just like that half inch off on their passes, just not crisp enough today to get it done? Or do you think the game plan from the Irish was just that good? 
Yeah, Mason and I were talking after the game, and it's like, where, what do you identify as the moment where Maryland kind of lost the rope, right? Where, where the, things just got away. It's 3-3, three, three, then all of a sudden it's 5-3, and Maryland just couldn't get in gear. And I agree, Mason. It was one of those things where, you know, they get an open guy in the, in the crease on a cut, and Notre Dame just gets a stick on him, and, and he, can't complete the, he can't complete the catch and shoot. Just all those little small things, the Terps could just never get over the hump. And really it's because Notre Dame just was that deep, that talented. When you look at that roster for Notre Dame, the graduate transfers, the COVID year guys, the seniors, massively, massively experienced team to go along with just a ton of talent. Next year is gonna be interesting for Notre Dame because of how much they lose and how much can they actually reload in the portal. They're losing so many guys. Yeah, Chris Cavanaugh's coming back. They're losing a ton of people off that team. And that Notre Dame team next year might look a lot like Maryland last year. Before we send it to break, this is our last uh, on field here of the 2024 season. Thanks to the big dog himself, Rick Jacklett, for his sponsorship and your hometown IT team, Viner Four Gates. We'll be back after the break to wrap this one up. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the DC metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. Hey, Rick Jackson, who's your favorite number one term? Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know, Rakeem Jarrett, it's always been my favorite number one. Hey, Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jackson Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service. Plus, you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jackless Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the Big Dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. All right, this is the last segment. Of course, we will see you for football in 96 days yeah, or so. Yeah, 96 days. Football season starts. Bruce, the run that the Terps had to get here was epic. It was great. It was great. It reminded me a lot of 2011, Tillman's first year, where they had no shot. They had to come from behind to beat Lehigh, then uh, go to I mean, come to Gillette to beat Syracuse, who was the number one, and they beat him six to five on a goal by Greg Catalino. Then they played Duke and destroy him, and then Virginia took us down in the championship game. But uh, two and six in the title games. But you know what? 10 years in the Final Four, eight title games, two Final Four games, John Tillman is the greatest. And what he did this year to get this team to this point was, and the players and the other coaches, was nothing short of a minor miracle. Hats off to the greatest coach in the cross today. Mason, we had a good time in College yep. Park, then in New York, and now here. Uh, best memory of this run? I gotta say it's that game against Duke. I just felt like the whole entire lacrosse world, especially on the island playing against some of those guys uh, that are from there, it really felt like you know everybody wanted Maryland to not be in the tournament. Then they wanted Maryland to lose at home to Princeton, have two straight years the first round exit. Then they wanted to see that Duke team and Brendan O'Neill finally get it done. Then they wanted to see Shelley get it done. And you know today they wanted to see the Cavanaugh brothers get it done, and, and they definitely saw that. Again, hats off to Notre Dame. Great great time but the, the trip up to Hempstead just you know everybody looking down looking at the betting odds that that day and and seeing the Terps just dominate that game dominated after being down that was just and Tillman talked about it that was a Maryland lacrosse win that was the be the best mentality and and that's that's definitely the memory from from this year all right 
And wrapping this up, we couldn't do what we do without the access that Maryland gives us. We cannot thank them enough for including us as part of the lacrosse family. Uh, being able to talk to the players after the field and building that relationship really adds a lot of insight to us, and I've heard it from everybody who watches that that's one of the key things. Anybody can talk about lacrosse, but we actually get to talk to the players. Because we lost today, and because it was a tough day, with no players today, but thank you to Maryland, and thanks to the team for everything that they give to us. And we will see you in August for Maryland football. Good afternoon from Philadelphia. Go Terps!